Alabama's undeniably one of the best jobs in college football, and it's open, and that means that there's going to be all sorts of byproducts that happen with the coaching search. Now, yesterday, immediately after Nick Saban announced his retirement, there were a couple of dueling reports. One, that they wanted a head coach named in the next 72 hours. Two, that Dan Lanning was already on the ground in Tuscaloosa and was the primary priority target for the Crimson Tide. And then three, it was reported from Oregon television stations in Eugene that Lanning was on the ground in Tuscaloosa. So that was all going on at the same time. The problem with big-time college football coaching searches is and this isn't fair and it's not right, but it is what happens is every time there is a name associated with the job or even like a revelation that this person is a candidate. If you get turned down, you look real bad. And it's not fair. It's not right. But the second somebody says no to you, it ain't fun and it ain't pretty and you take a hit. I don't know if you've seen the video of Dan Lanning announcing that he's staying at Oregon, but he is staying at Oregon. And I I, I want you to watch it kind of intently and see what your takeaway is and how you feel about Alabama after you watch this video. Four. Who has goals and aspirations? Raise your hand up. All right, everybody got goals and aspirations. You know how you get those? You be the best where you're at. That's how you reach goals and aspirations. That's how great things happen. It's not about worrying about the next thing. It's about worrying what's right in front of you, six inches right in front of your face. I want to remind you guys what that means. You guys just got here, don't know them, right? But it means something to be an organ done. Everybody makes what? They all, they all make commitments to things that they're going to do. A lot of starters, the world doesn't have a lot of what? Finishers. We're finishers. I want to be here in Eugene for as long as Eugene will have me. This place has everything that I could possibly ever want. There's a little bit of a problem in society today with people looking for what's next and where. It's essentially a just over a minute long video that's double birds to Alabama. Now it doesn't say that. He doesn't explicitly say like to hell with Alabama, but you're smart enough to know that's what you just watched. And is that fair to Alabama? No, not necessarily, but every single time somebody is going to take the opportunity to turn you down and just say, "Hey, whether it's the buyout, whether the timing is not right personally, professionally, whatever the case may be." whether they don't want to be the one that's going to replace Nick Saban, whatever it is. Alabama takes a hit every time somebody says no. And it makes you question, well, why are they saying no? What's going on behind the scenes? What's the problem? Because on the surface, it makes sense that that would be primo job that everybody in America, whether it's Marcus Freeman at Notre Dame, Ryan Day at Ohio State, Steve Sarkeesian at Texas, Lincoln Riley at USC, no matter the place, Logic says you should want to go to Alabama. You've seen the heights that they can reach. But there's more to it than that. And I don't know, again, I don't think it's fair to Alabama because Dan Lanning not wanting that job right now isn't an indictment on that job. It's not an indictment on Dan Lanning's character. It's it's nothing. It's just Dan Lanning saying that's not, it's not the job for me right now. And that's okay. Now, on the flip side, for Dan Lanning to have a pre-produced video, I don't know, 16 hours after Nick Saban announces his retirement and Dan Lanning is immediately linked to the job as the primo priority candidate for Alabama, makes me ask, I think, two or three questions. One, was that a leak of somebody who wanted to get out ahead of it to try to entice Dan Lanning? And I talked about this yesterday, that there have been every college, whether it is the smallest Mac school or the biggest SEC school, has cooks in the kitchen. And 
some have more than others. And I like it's one of the reasons. Like, obviously, I'm never going to be a college Division One head football coach. I don't think I could ever take the Auburn job, right? Like there are a lot of cooks in the kitchen who all believe that they're they should ha- that they're they should have the final word on what we're doing. Doesn't sound like a lot of fun. There are going to be cooks in the kitchen in Alabama, and there's going to be a faction that say they want Dan Lanning, a faction that says they want Lane Kiffin, a faction faction that wants help Bill O'Brien or Brian Daybull, Bill Belichick, whoever the hell you could list off. Somebody's going to want Bob Stoops. You're going to have a bunch of different people pulling in a bunch of different directions. And for 17 years, Nick Saban had them all pulling in the same direction that, by God, this is how we're doing it, because I said that's how we're doing it. It makes sense. And it worked out as pretty successful for them. But when your ego gets in the way for the past 17 years, you've taken your marching orders. And now the now the dynamic has completely changed where you have the ability to show off your influence, to put it on the table and let them see it. That's going to get in the way. And if you're going to want this wrapped up in 72 hours, I don't know that Alabama is going to get everybody on the same page in 72 hours. But I wonder if Dan Lanning was ever really the primary target or if that was floated out there is a please for the love of God, Dan, you're the only person that we want. Take this job. Please take this job. It's If it's a almost getting down on your hands and knees by proxy and begging Dan Lanning to come rescue your program because Alabama knows what the situation looks like if they get turned down more than once or twice. Now, most schools, most programs have done a pretty nice job of not having their coaching searches turning to that laughing stock, right? Remember back in, I don't know, was it 2002, 2003, four, whatever the case, whatever the year was, where Nebraska fired Frank Solich without a plan, and they just kept getting turned down and turned down and turned down, and the longer it went on, the longer it went on, the worse they looked, the worse they looked, and finally they just settled on Bill Callahan, who was essentially the first piece of ass that would say, yep, sounds good. Like It's like the lights got flipped on at the bar at 3 a.m., and you're just scrambling for whatever cockroach you can find to take home with you. That was That was Nebraska in that situation and everybody knows for the most part outside of like Tom Herman would still be the head coach at Texas if it wasn't for Texas making overtures to Steve Sarkeesian and having assurances that if we fire this guy you're going to be our guy right the only way we're firing him is if you are going to be our guy but I think everybody knows that there is a small possibility no matter how good the job is that it has that chance to turn into a, oh my God, we're the laughing stock of the college football world. And Alabama can't have that right now because of the because of the strength of Georgia. Georgia's strength means that Alabama has to make a slam dunk higher, has to do it quickly, has to do it in a manner that appears as if it is still the most coveted job in the college football landscape. And I don't, I, I don't know that it's fair <laughs> to call them 0 for 1 right now because I would believe that there is a faction of Bama fans, a faction of Bama boosters, influential Crimson Tide folks who floated Dan Lanning, not with the express idea that he was going to 100% be the top target, but that he was wanted to be, he was going to be their top target. That was who they wanted. Now, Alabama's Greg Byrne is the athletic director, and when he had to hire a uh, basketball coach, went really kind of out of the box with Nate Oates, uh, the Buffalo head coach, a few years ago. Not many people saw it coming, and immediately people thought that's not a good fit. And it's been a great fit. He's been a great, he's done a great job with Alabama basketball. Now, I'm not saying that I, I expect Greg Byrne to go out and hire like Appalachian State's coach or anything like that. I don't think that's going to happen, but I do think that there is an expectation problem when, if it's floated and whether that's fair, real, accurate or not, what was widely reported immediately yesterday, Nick Saban's retiring, Dan Lanning is their guy immediately. That was the, that was the consensus that or. 
Yeah. Press the wrong button. <laughs> Oregon head coach Dan Lanning was going to be their guy. That was who the, the only focus was going to be on. And you didn't hear anybody else floated, really. You heard, like there was a slight Mike Norvell could be in play. Um, Kalen DeBoer coaches who had some semblance of a relationship with Nick Saban, whether that's Lane Kiffin, et cetera. Everybody, no, nobody's going to be the perfect fit. And I think one Alabama fans need to temper those expectations because what you have had for 17 years is insanely rare. And you don't appreciate that until it's gone. I think. But I don't know that it's 100% just a slam dunk to say like it, there might have been some influential Alabama people who wanted Dan Lanning, but I bet you there's influential Alabama people who want Lane Kiffin. I bet you there's influential Alabama people who say, let's wait for the NFL head coaching cycle to, to stop spinning. Let's do this. Let's do that. So don't necessarily believe everything you hear, but there is 100% fact that, Every time somebody is linked to the job or even this guy's the top target and it doesn't pan out that way, fair or not, you start to question, why not? Why didn't that guy leave Oregon for Alabama? Or why didn't that guy leave Florida State for Alabama? Washington for Alabama. Ole Miss for Alabama. And it's a big problem because perception is reality. And every time that perception of your program is dented just a little bit, especially on a national level and especially at a program like Alabama who is recruited at a national level, it gets people asking questions. And if you don't have an answer, and if you don't have an immediate answer and a, a logical answer, a vocal answer, and one that like somebody with some semblance of some authority is saying, here's why this didn't work out. There are questions. Questions generally aren't good, not fun. And they don't bode well when you're in the middle of a coaching search. Now it came out that the 72 hours was the goal. If that's the goal, that means you should have had somebody <laughs> talking already that, and apparently it came to, people inside the program is this giant shock that Nick Saban was interviewing people for the wider, the open wide receivers coach job. And then I was like, ah, hell of it. I'm out. Like, I don't, I don't know how that could be. Like I've, I've, I think I've said two or three times on the program here that Nick Saban is in his last season coaching Alabama. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm, and he's going to join college game day. I'm pretty far removed from the Alabama football program. And then the people that were inside the program were like, holy cow, I never saw that coming. Really? Really? You never saw that coming? But nonetheless, if your goal is to get this accomplished in 72 hours, there are a lot of conversations that need to happen both internally and externally. And I just don't know that I have a ton of faith that that's going to happen and be that it's, it's going to be that expedited. But you got to get, from the athletic director and the NIL collective and all those things, get your boosters on the same page, get everybody on the same page. This is what we are doing. And until you can get everybody pulling in that same direction, you're going to have problems. Problems lead to other cracks in the armor that I don't know that Alabama wants to see or deal with because you can pretend as if that no matter what, no matter who you hire, that you're going to be successful. After Bear Bryant left, they won one national championship between 1980 and when Nick Saban got there in 2009. It's not as completely slam dunk, simple, as easy of a job as everybody makes it out to be. Whoever they hire is going to have a great chance at success. But the longer this drags on, and I realize that it's, it's not, I don't know that it's fair to have this conversation 18 hours after Nick Saban retired. But I'm just here to tell you, the longer it drags on, the more questions come out, and the more questions that come out, the more the perception of your program takes a hit. And when you are locked in a situation where you are fighting Georgia and LSU and now Texas and Oklahoma who are coming into your conference for the best recruits in America, the su supremacy of 
the conference, questions and perception hits are not a great thing to endure right now. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle. Appreciate you, man. Going to support your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. If you are watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all of the great college football content we're pumping out here at Saturday Glory. If you're listening on the podcast feed, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping out the channel. Back at it on Sunday. Now that the four-team college football playoff era is over, I think it'll be fun to dive back in and recap and look at what are some of the best college football playoff games of all time in the 14 playoff era. And we'll do that on Sunday here on Saturday glory.